Hi, I'm George Pearson, and this is the second edition of my weekend blog. Now, if you've only seen this the first time, what I'm doing here now on the weekends is I'm doing this little blog format, which will give me a chance to talk about things that may not deserve a full video or video project, or that are time sensitive, like sales, things like that that are coming up, or new features that are coming out I want to talk about, or questions I want to answer that, again, don't really fit into a full video project format, just gives me a chance to do some of these quicker, shorter discussions in one convenient place. I'll be doing these on the weekends. I'm not really sure exactly which day or what time of the day I'll be doing that on the weekends, and I'm still kind of working out exactly how I want to do this. But that's the basic concept, just giving me a place to talk a bit more about things that I can't easily work into a regular project style video. Okay, let's go ahead and roll the credits and then get into this week's video blog. Okay, here we go again. Now, as I was saying, this whole blog post idea will be changing, varying as I get used to the concept and try some new things. I'm also going to be at some point here putting myself actually on video as well, but that's going to need to wait just a little bit because to be blatantly honest here, my video camera broke. So I don't have a current video camera, so I can't do that. And also I need to clean my studio up a little bit here, make it look a little bit more camera ready, camera presentable. So that's down the road. You'll begin to see me here at some point once I get some of those things taken care of, the technical issues taken care of. But the first thing I want to talk about here, this was a question that actually was asked this past week as a comment on one of the videos. But it's a good question, so I thought I'd just talk about this. Let me switch over here to Photoshop Elements. This is Photoshop Elements 2018. That's one of the old projects I did quite a while ago. I just kind of like that shot. But the question was about this right down here. What's this export thing all about and why is it always grayed out? You'll also normally see automation tools grayed out as well. Those two are normally grayed out. Now what those are are expansion slots that Adobe has put in here for third-party developers who want to create plugins for the Photoshop Elements program. So they may have a plugin that will do some special export functions, in which case it would show up here under the Export tab. So this isn't currently being used by Photoshop Elements, but it's available to be used by a third-party plugin developer. Same thing down here for the Automation Tools. This isn't used by Photoshop Elements normally, but it can be used by plugins. As you can see here, I have three different sets of plugins installed in my Photoshop Elements 2018. I have the Nick Collection up here at the top, the On1 right down here. This actually is 2018.5. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And then the Elements Plus plugins right down here. So they all show up under the automation tools. And the export works exactly the same way. If I had happened to have any plugins that were using the export function, they would drop in right there under that export. So that's why those are always grayed out unless you pick up a plugin which happens to use one of these two expansion slots right in there. So pretty straightforward, nothing really magical. You're not missing anything if those are grayed out. It just means that you don't have any of those third-party plugins. They'll be using those positions. Okay, let's go ahead and switch over here back to the browser. And then let's switch over here to the on one Photo Editor. Now, I did a review about this just a little while ago. Let me bring that up right there. There it is. And let me see when I actually did this one. That was on June 10th. And I wasn't that happy about the program at that point. I was having some issues with it, some speed issues, some problems getting to some of the different tools in the program. And this is with the version 2018. Aside from those problems, I thought it was a great program, but I was having some problems with it and I talked about that in the video, so I couldn't really recommend the program at that point completely because of those issues that I was having. But they have come out with 2018.5 fairly soon after I did that one video and the 0.5 version of that has solved all those issues. So this program now is running great on my computer and having no problems with this one at all and I really like this program now and I'll be doing a video, a new review video about this in the next week or so so you can see what's new here in 2018. I also think that they're going to be coming out with a version 2019 here in a month or two so they're working on getting this 
improved as fast as they can and obviously they're fixing problems as soon as they find out about those as well. So again, something which I really like. Now I have this one installed as a plugin. It's kind of a Photoshop Lightroom style program where it does some of the stuff that Photoshop does. It does a lot of things that Lightroom does. So it's really designed for working with and improving photographs and does a marvelous job of that. It also has a lot of great presets and I really love the presets in this program and that's where it really comes in handy. It has a much better preset set than Lightroom does and since it comes in as a plugin, works as a plugin in Photoshop or in Lightroom and also in Photoshop Elements, it gives those programs a much greater capability because of those presets. And now that it's running fine, I have nothing bad to say about this any longer. I actually recommend this program as a nice addition to your software set. So I'll be doing a video about this again in just a little bit. If you want to find out more about this, it's just at onone.com or there's a link on my georgepearson.com blog site as well. So that's a little update on upcoming review here next week or so. I'll be doing a new review on the 2018.5, again, which I like quite a bit. Now talking about previews, switch over here to my georgepearson.com site. This is my blog site now and I have my blog posts on here. But the main one I want to talk about is a new one down here and that's that Adobe just announced an update which will be coming up in the next version of Adobe Photoshop CC, which is version 2019, which is coming out at some point, I believe, next month in October. Normally between middle towards the end of October, they come out with their updates on their programs. And they have announced a, an upgrade here to the Content-Aware Fill. Now, if you've used the Content-Aware Fill, you know, it's a great little tool. You can go in and select an area and then Photoshop will fill that in with stuff from around that area and make a real nice quick remove of whatever it is you want to cover up. But it also will frequently make a mess of the job, kind of messes things up, doesn't really do a great job of making that fill area. Now the new tools here is bringing in a whole new dialog to control the content where fill and adding in a lot of new tools allowing you to do some great stuff. You can control exactly where in your image it's taking information from to fill in that hole that you put in there. It also allows you to rotate and flip and some other options giving you much more control of the content aware fill making it a just a phenomenal tool. Now again I haven't actually used this it's not going to be available until the 2019 version comes out. I'll get that as fast as I can and do a review of that but they do have a quick little sneak peek right down here. Now I can't put this video of theirs into my video for copyright reasons and so forth. But you'll find this video, a little one and a half minute long video, you'll find it on my blog site, again, it's georgepearson.com. And right now it's the top post. That may not be the case when you get there, but it's new content aware Phil coming to Adobe Photoshop CC. And there's their little video preview of the new stuff that the content aware Phil is going to be able to do. And this is really very exciting stuff. This will become one of my most used tools once this stuff is in here. I've always been kind of iffy on the content aware Phil. I'll use it sometimes or I'll try it first and it doesn't work quite right. I'll go back to using my older techniques. But I think this is going to solve all those problems that content aware Phil has. And this will become my standard way of doing that kind of a fill or repair on the images once this new update has come in. So very exciting news here from Adobe. Talking about Photoshop, let's move over here. Now I've on occasion talked about using specialty brushes and different brushes and so forth in Photoshop. I've also talked about that in Photoshop Elements and I have a couple of older videos on how to find and install brushes for Photoshop and also for Photoshop Elements. I wanted to just mention this as a great source. I don't know if you've gone to DeviantArt or not. It's a great site for people who are putting up their own stuff, their own images, their own work, and even things like their own brush sets. And you can download this stuff for free. All you need to do is just do a search up here. It's DeviantArt.com, Resources, Applications, PS Brushes, Popular All Time, and you'll come right to this page. Because I don't think you want, really want to memorize all that and type that in, I'll put this link on the resource page for this blog video. So you can just go ahead and click on that link there and get right to this page. But what this is, it's a bunch of brush sets that people have put together and they've put up here. You can download these things most of the time for free. Some people sell their brushes for, you know, like five bucks for the brush set. Very inexpensive. But there are some great 
brush options in here. Things like here's some that's designed for doing this kind of anime illustrations. There was one I saw earlier here on oh here it is on eye brushes. It's different brushes to come in and create custom eyes. You can even use these things on actual photo eyes to improve the look of your photographic eyes as well. It's a really interesting brush set. So it's a great resource to get some new and very cool brushes to use. And again, these things, even though they're Photoshop brushes, they'll also work in Photoshop elements. And I'll be doing two videos on this stuff coming up here very shortly. I'll be doing a new video for Photoshop and a new video for Photoshop elements on how to download and install custom brush sets. And I'll use this resource here as my resource for those two videos. So we get a little update there on some videos coming up. And again, it's a great little resource. And take a look at the support page for this blog video. And I'll have this link right there. So you just click on it and go right to this page. Again, most of the time, these are all free. Some of them may have a very small cost on the brushes. But just some great brush and brush options in here. The last thing I want to talk about today over here is Smug Mug, which is a kind of a specialty website site and it allows you to make portfolio websites where you can store your pictures online like you do on Flickr which you can do for free the least expensive version here is about five bucks a month but it gives you a lot more options than you have over on sites like Flickr aside from just being able to you know have a place to store your images and download your images and share your images you also can create regular web portfolio sites based on those images that are far more customizable than you have over on Flickr where you have no customizations really. But you also, because SmugMug was originally a company that did online printing and there used to be a link in Photoshop Elements in the share section where you could send your images from Elements right over to SmugMug, had them printed out on as regular photo prints or printed out on different products and so forth. That tool in Photoshop Elements has gone away they no longer link to this site, but this site still does that kind of work. You still can set that up. And even more interesting, if you are looking into making a business out of your photography, is that you can set up a shopping cart system here inside of SmugMug with one of their more advanced plans and then sell your photography right there through SmugMug. Very interesting tool. Let me show your plans real fast over here. They have a 14-day free trial, so you can play with it and see if you like it or not. We'll take a look at the overview. There we go. Again, 14-day free trial. And here's the basic plans. $4 for the basic, $6 for the power, and portfolio and business. Those are all per month. The portfolio and the business, this is where you get that shopping cart stuff set up. So if you're looking at making a business out of your photography, this is not a bad option. It's very inexpensive, actually. Not a bad option at all. I'll go ahead and go this route. Now, if you want to find out more about this, I have a link for Smug Mug right over on my georgepearson.com blog site as well. Now, they are a sponsor of my site. One of the reasons I mention them here, of course. So if you subscribe to them or get one of these website plans and you do that through the link over here on georgepearson.com, you just find that it's on the right hand side down a little ways here. There's that 2018.5 on one photo raw. And there's the SmugMug link right down there on the right-hand side. Let's go back here again to SmugMug. So if you get one of those plans, I'll get a little finder's fee on that. Not very much, but anything helps. And that goes back to keeping this YouTube channel going and keeping my blog post page going. So great little, little plan. And if you want to, if you've been using sites like Flickr for your image hosting online and you want to go to the next step, get a bit more professionalism about doing that or have more options for doing that, this is a very good option for that. Let's take a look at the features just quickly here and let's take a look at the details on that one. There we go, all kinds of stuff in here and here's what I wanted to show you. The different plans are right here and what's included is over here, photo website. They all have the same plans of photo website. No ads at all. It's one thing you get by having this, you know, having a subscription is because you're paying them a few bucks a month to host this, they're not going to be hitting you with any ads, which is really nice. And lots and lots of storage, 
video clip size. You can do a quite a bit here. High def video quality. You can, so you can store video up here as well and show video as well and link to your video. It's not just photo, but link to video as well. And all the plans have that. They all have good community and support. Look at personalization in here. Again, lots of personalization. This is where I like this better than sites like Flickr in that you can make the own, your own look, your own design for your page. You're not using just the standard default Flickr template page. Also up here, notice that you can work with Flickr and take your Flickr stuff right back over here to SmugMug. So if you, you're switching from Flickr to SmugMug, it's very easy to do. You can bring in your own logo, of course, things like that. And let's take it down here. Prints and gifts. They have all kinds of great stuff, you know, greeting cards and photo cards, books, frames, and so forth. A lot of stuff that can be included in there. So if you want to take your images, take your photography to the next level and build it into a business, this is a real nice way to go to set up your business site because they handle the shopping cart and all of that for you. It makes it very, very easy. Okay, it's just a little quick then thing about the Smug Mug. So if you're, we're using earlier versions of Photoshop Elements and you maybe used to use that that service where you would link right from Elements into Smug Mug to do a get a nice professional print then that's what happened to it. It's just changed just a little bit. We no longer have that link in the share section on Photoshop Elements that takes your image right over here but that's easy to do. You just save your image out to whatever format you want that works here with Smug Mug and then upload it into Smug Mug. So it, it takes you maybe one or two more steps. Not that big of a deal. It will still work with your Photoshop Elements developed images. But again, it's a two week free trial, no credit card required for that. And it's a real nice service. If I didn't have my own websites, I'd probably use this service myself as opposed to the Flickr. And then if you go over here to georgepearson.com, there it is, and come down to this link right down here. I'll get a couple of bucks as a finder's fee if you go ahead and subscribe to one of their website services. Okay, so there you go. That takes care of today's little blog post. And again, I'll be changing these, adjusting these as I go and move further forward. And I'll be doing one of these each weekend. So if you leave comments about this, if you have any suggestions, any requests, the things you want me to talk about in this kind of a blog format, go ahead and leave those in the comments and I'll get right to those on the next video blog post. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.